Today, we're going to talk about Scholar. Scholar, Scholar, Scholar. This can be a really tough job if you don't know how to utilize your fairy cooldowns as well as your Aetherflow stacks and just the many skills that are available to Scholar. If you are a beginner or casual player who wants to get into healing classes, then I'm going to provide you a step-by-step -step practical guide from level 1 to 80. This is not a pep talk or encouraging words. I want to provide something that you can benefit off of, learn from, and learn even more on your own in the future. We will also cover some major misconceptions that people have with Scholar particularly compared to other healers. My goal with this video is to help you build confidence on understanding the job and the very basics so then you can go and learn more on your own. Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Ash and today I have another Final Fantasy guide for you. If at any time you get value out of this video, then use that limit break four and smash that subscribe button down below. Seriously though, please make sure to have that limit break four somewhere on your hotbar sprouts. Let's jump into the video. I know there's a lot of controversy in what a healer should be doing or not doing rather than healing or DPSing, but I am under the strict belief that I want to be as helpful and efficient as possible. There is no reason in the world to overheal your party, as you're not being very helpful if you can help kill enemies quicker. There is also no reason to ignore healing as that is literally our job. I will be operating under this belief in the video. If you want a white made version of this video then the link will be down below. These are my opinions and if you think scholars should be focusing on something else or I misinterpreted something then leave a comment down below. Here are a few of my beginner tips that I do when playing any healing class at the start of the dungeon. Look at your tank's gear's item level. This is a huge indicator in where the tank is placed out wise. If the tank is under geared for the dungeon, i.e. you're in a level 76 dungeon and his gear is item level 54 or even item level 59, you can automatically assume he's going to take more damage and vice versa. Check DPS gear. Same goes for DPS, if they are under geared or over geared then you'll be able to safely assume if they're not going to kill enemy mobs as quicker or if they're going to utterly destroy them. Tip number 3, stay geared. I find it more important for scholar than any of the other healing classes to keep your gear up to date under level 50. Once you're over level 50 you can use poetics for buying gear, I'll link that video down below as well. Tip number 4, pet hotbar. The fairy is considered a pet and has its own specific toolkit to help it move around and tell it what to do. This is seen under action and traits, orders, and then click the pet icon. I generally only utilize the place and the follow icon, but you can play around more with this later. I always make sure I'm aware of my position in order for my fairy skills to hit all party members. Let's move on to level content, level 1 to 29. Scholar early on is fairly simple in the fact that your fairy is doing most of the healing for you. The fairy is a little clunky at the time of patch 5.55 but might be better when they rework it in the upcoming patches. Luckily for the lower end content your fairy is doing most of the healing with the occasional physic to keep the tank alive. I also might be mispronouncing physic but that's what I'm just going to call it for the sake of this video. Between your party wide regen skill Whispering Dawn and your fairy healing you will not have to worry too much about healing at this point in the game. Dungeon pulls will look something like this. Dot enemies with bio as you're running, spam rune 1 and use Whispering Dawn often. Honestly very little healing at this point as long as your party members are not taking punches to the face and even then the fairy has your back. Keep lucid dreaming on cooldown and you should have very little problems starting off. Before moving on to 30 to 49 content there's a huge misconception that we have to address with scholars. It could be a bit confusing but stick with me here. All healers have GCD base heals and a stronger heal. White Mage, Cure 1, Cure 2, Astrologian has Benefic 1 and Benefic 2, but Scholars are very different in this aspect. They have Physic and Adloquium. The reason this is different is if you started as a White Mage or an Astro, you'll hear something like once you have Cure 2 or Benefic 2, you don't really need to use Cure 1 or Benefic 1, which is not wrong. Watch my White Mage video to learn more about that. But this isn't the case with Scholar. You will be utilizing both Adloquium and Physic in lower level content. The reason being is that Adloquium provides a heal plus shield for 1000 MP. Physic on the other hand is a stronger heal with no shield for 400 MP. Adlo's shield effect will always be overwritten by a stronger shield. 
If the enemy has lower DPS or the tank is overgeared, then you will probably not need to add low twice in a row. But if you add low, physic, add low, by the second add low, the first shield will most likely be gone. This is a way to just be more efficient and not go through your MP very quickly. The more you use add low and the more you'll understand it and you have plenty of time leveling up to figure out when you need to add low or physic or in best case scenario what you should be working towards is using off global cooldowns or OG CDs to heal your party members. Now that we talked about that, let's move on to level 30 to 49 content. As this is a practical healing guide, I won't be going into detail for all the skills, just what you can be focusing on for healing as you're leveling up, and with Scholar, that is a lot of skills. The two main skills to be focusing on now are Adlo or Adloquium and Aetherflow. Think of Aetherflow stacks as free healing and MP regeneration. Once you activate Aetherflow skill during battle, you'll get 3 stacks and 10% of your MP back. From here, you can use two skills, Lustrate or energy drain. Think of Lustrate as a free physic where possible. If you are really in need of no healing and your ether flow stack is off cooldown, you can spend any of your stacks of ether flow on energy drain which will do damage and give you MP back as well. I only do this if I'm in desperate need of MP or have had bad MP management for a fight or if Aether Flow stack is going to be on cooldown and I can get 3 back instantly. Art of War is just your AoE damage skill. Be careful as this can be a real MP drainer if you do not manage it well. Dungeon pulling will look something like this. Add low after the first pull. We do not regen or shield tank before his first pull. You can usually time this pretty well after a few pulls because you don't want to pull aggro. Add low tank. Dot each enemy as you're running. Once you dot your first enemy, pop ether flow stacks to start that 60 second cooldown and get ready to slap that ground or use Art of War and heal as necessary. If the tank shield is gone with only a little health chipped away when he stops, you can use another ad low here. After that, you can utilize Lustrate for your OG CD heals instead of Physic. Keep lucid dreaming on cooldown and between that and the ether flow stacks you should be able to maintain MP and heal your party pretty easily. Hey guys, editing stuff in here. As I was editing this video, I realized that I skipped over Sucker. I didn't read what I had written about it. So I just want to do a quick note. Sucker is your AOE heal with a shield. This is a great skill to use as a pre-pull for boss fights to give everyone a shield or to prevent raid-wide damage or recover from. Since it's all you have in terms of AOE skills in the beginning, you'll have to use it as an AOE heal, but later we get skills that are better suited for healing the party more efficiently. I want to make a special note here. This is only assuming that you have been geared for each dungeon. If you're in a level 44 dungeon with level 20 gear, you're going to have a much harder time keeping up healing with Scholar. Level 50 to 80 content. We have quite a few skills to go over. I'm going to quickly go over each one and tell you how I use them. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll be giving you my final thoughts on Scholar and why you should be playing it. Level 50, Sacred Soil. I literally use this every 30 seconds for all tank trash pulls and boss pulls. It requires an Aether Flow stack, but with a cooldown of 30 seconds and pretty much only taking 90% of the damage inflicted, or 10% damage reduction. This is a great skill and I feel it's really underutilized by players. Level 52, Indomitability. This is just a free party-wide heal using an Aether Flow stack instead of casting Succor. Level 56, Skill Deployment Tactics. This one is tricky. If you have a shield on you, you can use deployment tactics on yourself to extend your shield to other party members. You can also use this on other party members who have shields to extend that shield to everyone else. Honestly, this one is pretty hard to time, but once you get used to it, you can use it effectively. I really only use it if there's stack markers and everyone is grouped up. It also doesn't affect if there's already a shield on a party member. Level 58, Emergency Tactics. With a tiny cooldown of 15 seconds, allows add low to turn into a huge heal instead of a heal and shield. I use this after big room wide damage or tank buster for some good healing. 
Even though it's unclear, this does work for both Sucker and Adlo. Even though it says galvanize effect, I think they just need to edit the tooltip to make it a little bit more clear, but it does work for both. Level 60, Dissipation. Sends a fairy away and grants you bonus healing and a free full stack of Aether Flow. Aether Flow stacks more than make up for the time your fairy is away. On top of that, you get a healing potency bonus that only applies to spells or GCDs, not abilities, which Aether Flow stacks are abilities. Still, again, this makes up for the fairy being gone. Just be aware you cannot use other fairy healing abilities when you cast this. Yes, we still have more abilities. I swear, Scholar has tons of abilities. Level 62, Excogitation. I am not going to be able to say that well. You're just going to have to accept it for what it is. A preventative heal that works as follows. When applied and the tank drops below 50%, it will activate. Pretty great for tank busters and apply for trash mobs if you feel the tank is taking too much damage. Level 70, Aether Pack. This is a great skill to use on trash mobs. You have access to a fairy gauge now that increases as you use aether flow stacks when the fairy summoned. You see why now we want to prioritize using aether flow stack skills instead of GCDs. I use this skill whenever the tank stops to pull the mob. Be aware that you cannot use other fairy skills when this one is active. It provides big healing over time and pretty much all you need if you have enough fairy gauge to keep it going. Level 74, Recitation, a guaranteed critical healing. You can use this for Adlo or Adloquium before a boss fight. You can use with Sucker before raid-wide damage to prevent or recover from. You can also use with Indomitability for the obvious huge party-wide heal crit. Level 76, Fey Blessing, a party-wide heal. With the 60 second cooldown, Honestly, I just keep it on cooldown. You can only use the Fairy Gauge for this skill and Aether Pack, so you might as well use this one often. Level 78, Enhanced Sacred Soil. Now only doesn't have damage reduction, but now regeneration. Use this skill often, every 30 seconds. Level 80, Summon Seraph. Fairy on steroids. I use this on every boss battle. I don't really like to use this on trash pools as you want to maximize when your fairy is healing and if your fairy is moving, your fairy is not healing. This is much better for boss battles and when you're in an arena with bosses, where you're not having to move around as much. Finally, level 80, Consolation. Can only be used when you have Summon Seraph active and it is an amazing skill. Not only does it heal the party with a good healing potency, it also shields the party members as well. You can use this twice during your Summon Seraph skill. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we made it. As you can see, Scholar has a lot of skills to manage. That is why it's so important to understand how they interact with each other. You will notice that the fairy can have a delay due to animation lock with some skills. So as you play more, you'll understand which skills you can pair and which you can. All this being said at level 80 or endgame level cap, this is so much fun to play. With all of these spells at your disposal, I honestly felt like I was doing more damage than healing most of the time. It is almost a bad thing with how many skills and spells and having to deal with the fairy. It can be overwhelming pretty quickly. But when running a dungeon and utilizing your fairy skills and aether flow stacks, other than the occasional ad low, everyone stays pretty high health no matter what. Scholar is honestly a rewarding job to play when you learn it right and it makes the healing dynamic and battle dynamic really fun because of the fairy. I would say it's an intermediate level of healing where white mage is being beginner and astro is more higher tiered. I want to thank you all for watching this this far. I've linked my Discord channel below for the community if you want to join a helpful, positive, and beginner-friendly community. And as always, if you want to watch more Final Fantasy tutorials, then you can click here.